Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In the last video, I showed you how to measure the FM deviation using the Bessel Null method. I put a link to this video up in the corner for you. The Bessel Null method works great if you have control over the modulation signal itself, and we don't always have that kind of control. In this video, I'm going to show you how to measure FM deviation using what I call the min-max method. This min-max method does not easily lend itself well to setting deviation levels, but it works way cool in measuring them. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's go see what we need to accomplish this. Unlike the Bessel Null method, which can be done with either a narrow band CW receiver or a spectrum analyzer, the min-max method requires the use of a spectrum analyzer. In order to get an accurate measurement, this spectrum analyzer must have frequency resolution at least down to the 100 Hz level. If you had a frequency resolution, let's say, of 1 kHz, you might measure 3 kHz of deviation, but this could be anything from 2.5 to 3.5 kHz, and it would still tell you 3 kHz. Like before, we have to be aware of the input limitations of the spectrum analyzer, so we do not blow its front end. If it is a direct connection, be sure to protect the front end of your spectrum analyzer. When in doubt, attenuate. We also need to be careful to keep the signal source happy with the proper impedance termination. So, let's see how to get the spectrum analyzer ready to make this measurement. We select the center frequency to be the frequency of our transmitter. In my case, it's 146.52 MHz. We set the span to 25 kilohertz, and then the RBW, I have mine set to 3 kilohertz. We're going to need two traces for this. The first one is going to be a max hold trace. That we can set up right now, max hold. The second trace is going to have to be a min hold trace. We can't start that until we have a live signal. Alright, let's go to the bench and take a look at my setup. We start out at the signal source, my mobile radio. The output of the mobile radio goes directly into the bird watt meter. I have my sampling plug in place. The output of this sampling plug is 50 dB below the signal flowing through the watt meter. The output side of the watt meter is connected to my dummy load. The output of the sampling plug goes directly up to my spectrum analyzer. We are absolutely ready to go to make our measurement. This method is often performed with a signal that is off the air, listening to an existing signal. This could be a repeater, a mobile rig, or a handheld transceiver, or HT. In many cases, these are set up to transmit a CTCSS or PL tone along with the voice signal. If it is transmitting a CTCSS tone, then you will be measuring the amount of deviation above the PL tone deviation. If you're interested in the actual deviation of the voice signal, then you must disable CTCSS tone encode before making this measurement. I have done that on my mobile radio here. We begin by transmitting into our dummy load. And now that we have a live signal, we initiate the second trace, the min hold. And we continue to transmit uh, until we get no real changes in the overall envelope of the two traces. And uh, we got to keep talking into the microphone to do this. Before we stop transmitting, we need to freeze the traces so that we save the data that we have. So I'm going to go in here to my min hold and go freeze. I'm going to go to trace one 
and I'm going to do a freeze and now I can stop transmitting. Now we use the markers to make the measurement. We choose a particular power level graticle that might be minus 40 dB, minus 50 dB, some convenient one here I think by looking at this I'm interested in the minus 40 dB and that will be the one I use. So I initiate a marker and I position it on that gradical on my one trace as close to it as I can get and then I initiate a second marker and I'm going to assign that to the second trace and I'm going to put this on that same gradical there see I got one and two and the difference in frequency between these two will tell me the deviation. Now there's another way to do this using relative markers. It's called the delta marker. So I'm going to go over here to marker one. I'm going to say delta. So this now becomes my reference. And I'm going to now uh, uh, assign that marker to trace two. Don't worry about the fact that it just jumped traces. The reference is still in the same place horizontally, which is the important part. And now we're going to move. Notice that this marker here is moving. And if we go up to the same power level gradical, right there, I see that I have 6.875 kilohertz between this marker and this marker, so that will be the deviation of my transmitter. If we're interested in measuring the deviation of the CTCSS tone, then the procedure is just a little bit different. The first difference is that we want absolutely no other modulation on the signal only the CTCSS tone. And I accomplished this with my little interface that I use for other testing. See if I can get it down in here. Here we are. My interface I use for other kinds of testing. That allows me to turn on the PTT and not have any audio if I choose to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the PL tone transmit. So I've done that. We have PL tone and code turned on. We have max hold trace running here. We're going to hit the PTT. And so now we are seeing the, the envelope with the CTCSS tone turned on. We're going to take this and we're going to freeze. We're going to freeze this trace. We're going to stop transmitting. We're going to turn the tone off. We no longer have a tone. We begin transmitting again. We start another trace, this time min hold. We wait for a few moments for that to settle. And then we freeze that. We now have our data. We can stop transmitting. And now we use the same procedure as before to measure the deviation. So we'll choose the minus 30 dBm level right here. My marker is already here, so I'm going to move my marker over here to the minus 30 mark. I'm right on the minus 30 mark. I am going to hit the delta. I'm going to change to trace 2. And I'm going to put it back on the minus 30 mark. And it tells me that my CTCSS tone deviation is 667 hertz. Quick and easy. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.